Hey, what's up guys? I'm Bright Torn and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 Tours and Tournaments. So the amounts of negative events and failures we had in the last episode was almost comical. Just ridiculous. So hopefully this episode will go a little bit better. And you know what? I kind of blame the mustache. It's got to be the mustache, right? We need a, a good proper man's beard. So let's get, I don't know, maybe this one. Maybe a, a haircut will improve his luck. I don't know. Because, <laughs> yeah, I just, I, I'm not a mustache man. Don't like mustaches personally. I got a big old beard. Had to keep a mustache when I was in the army and when I worked in corrections, and I hated it. All right, so another feast invite here. And uh, we are not going to be going to this. This is so far away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not gonna not gonna be doing that uh, That feast We need to make some progress. Uh, we didn't get much done Last episode because of that uh, that journey and we had so many events to, to go through uh, So we have the the chance to assassinate him. Obviously, it's not the right moment. We have horrible odds currently So we're gonna try and prove that and it looks like we were able to discover somebody's secret here. Okay now, I am very much worried about Losing his spy master. If we lose his spy master, then we're gonna have to uh, basically end any attempts to assassinate him. Uh, so we have this character secret here and this character here. So let's go ahead and blackmail this character since they have the the best odds of helping us here. And so now let's use our hook and get them invited, and that increases. Our chance of success by quite a bit. An event about information brokering. So I expect Count Raymond would be keenly interested in the information I have acquired, indicating his chancellor is sleeping. So this is what we've just found. Okay. Um, so obviously we don't want to give him that that information because that's what we use to to blackmail him. So all the gold and the entry lifestyle experience points would be nice. We're gonna instead get the hoarding secrets intrigue plus one. All right, so let me see if we can blackmail her as well and get her forced into this. Though there's a chance she refuses, then you lose both of them. All right, so we've seen this event many times in our past series, that plush and exotic carpet event. And uh, we're probably not gonna wanna do it because he might become extra vigilant and they'll have the hostile scheme resistance. And we don't really need it to gain progress, though, you know, making it more likely to succeed would be helpful. But yeah, we'll probably have to get it, uh, just take the penalty ourselves. So we did get that, that hook. So let's go ahead and recruit her now, force her in. To increase our odds of success even more. So now we're at 91% success chance and 95% chance that nobody will discover uh, our involvement. So you see these alerts have popped up over here. So pay homage, you know, that's something that you've been able to do uh, since the, the Royal Court expansion. Where you pay homage to your king. Overall, it's a good thing to do because uh, it gives you the, uh, the renown. And so that's uh, really helpful. There's not a lot of ways to get that. Uh, so you generally want to pay homage, but what's interesting is now you actually have to travel to the court to do it with the travel system. And so we're really far. Uh, we're as far as you could possibly be from Paris. Here in France, I mean. You know, we have to travel all the way from Toulouse, the far south of France, to Paris. So everything takes us a long time. It's one of the, the negatives of being way down here. And so if we want to do that, we'd have to travel all the way up there. I don't think we're going to do it just now, but eventually we will just because it is so beneficial. Uh, so we want to pay homage to him now that he is of age and is ruling in his own right. That's the reason why we can we can pay homage to him now. Uh, you can also petition him. We can see what options are available, but of course that requires us to go up north as well. And I think we just got somebody new in this game. So now we can attempt to assassinate him. 95% chance of success. And it worked out for us. 
So already things are going better than they did last episode. Last episode, that 5% chance would have been exactly <laughs> what would have happened there. Uh, so now we've killed our brother. We inherited his sword, Excalibur, pedestal item that we won't be able to use since we don't have a royal court yet. And we now have his two counties, which puts us at the, the top of our domain holding limit now. And so these are the two counties we now hold. This has the homesteads, increased taxes and levies. Looks like he was constructing a hunter's lodge, so this would be a good place for us to do our, our hunts. And he's got the hamlets here for the extra taxes. Now looking at Toulouse, we never did look last episode of what we had here. We have the crop fields, reduced co uh, cost for holding feast in this holding, and then you get the taxes. And then the hide tents. We might want to change that out. Yeah, I might end up changing that out for something else, but we'll, we'll make use of the extra slot before we, we do, though. Uh, we got all this money, um, so now we're uh, able to actually get some stuff. Uh, and we need to fill his council position as well. Uh, so because that one powerful vassal is still a boy, we can pretty much put whoever we want into this position. Let me just see what his marshal is. It's pretty bad, but yeah, you could move him to, to this position if you wanted to, if like we had, let's say, a better, uh, we actually have a, a decent knight, knight here who could be a, a good marshal. But yeah, let's say if we had like somebody that was really good diplomacy-wise that we wanted to put there, we could do that. Just looking at all of our options available to us. And yeah, it seems like putting this knight in place as our marshal would be our best choice. So let's go ahead and do so. Now, of course, when we... If we take him out of that position, he will be irritated at us. So we still have him training commanders, but you know what? Let's go ahead and do the organized army. Because we need that uh, reduction of the, the army maintenance. So now that we have some money, there's a couple options open to us. We could go ahead and construct that building here. Uh, or we could improve our men at arms, because I'd like to do this war here soon. And that's probably what's in our best interest. Uh, is to go ahead and improve the men at arms. We actually did get something from him. An armored footman. Okay, so we're probably going to make use of that. I think we'll get rid of the light footmen eventually. So we're not going to improve them at all. But yeah, we now have that, that armored footman. So what we're going to want to do is get these guys stationed. Since we're going to have the war starting up soon. And then maybe boost one of these two. And yeah, maybe boost up the bowman. We'll see what he has and what we're trying to counter. So he has the light footman countered by the archers. The light horsemen, which we're not countering, we don't have pikemen. And he's got the armored footmen, which we're countering, uh, countering with the, the skirmishers here, the light footmen. Okay, so, um, I mean, if we were going to get anything just for counters purposes, we want the, the pikemen. We should probably improve, I'm thinking the archers. Yeah, let's go ahead and boost them. That'll be 55, it's, it's also cheaper. So we might be able to get a building, depending on which one we want to place here. So what I'm thinking is the barracks to get the heavy infantry damage plus 20%, also reduce cost for holding grand tournament tournaments, and then we get the uh, levies as well. So that's 150 gold. Because I'm thinking we're going to station our uh, infantry here. Now as for the other locations and where we might want to station troops, I don't think there's any bonuses in either of these locations. So there's really no reason to station troops there. I mean, you can, but... There's no reason to if you're not going to get a, a bonus. We might just get one. Uh, let's let's take a look, actually. Why why speculate? Let's let's figure it out. So if we were to station somebody, yeah, it looks like just stationing them gives you the bonus, a small bonus. I see. So yeah, I suppose we can station troops there. So what we want to do is let's do we'll do the archers here, and we'll do the light cab here, and then the armored footmen would be here in Toulouse. So we need to get 150 to construct that building. It's not only when that give us those uh, bonuses, but it's going to improve our troops. And we have a new heir. This is our, our nephew. So which of our brothers had a son? Let's take a look here. Oh, <laughs> that's interesting. So our brother did in fact get his wife pregnant, but he was born after his father's death. 
Now, of course, in real life, uh, if uh, the woman is pregnant, then they don't handle the succession, or generally not supposed to handle the succession until after the baby's born. You know, usually see if it's a son, in which case the son would inherit his titles. So just her being pregnant would have stopped us from uh, succeeding. But basically, we did it just in time. Uh, he is a bleeder because that severe health penalty. So we'll have to see how long he even lives. So can we not change his name? Because I'm not sure how that's pronounced. Well, it looks like he's not in our court. So maybe that's the issue. Where Where is he at? Let's take a look here. Yeah, we could invite them both to court. I assume she'd bring her son with her. You have to pay for their travel expenses, though. I'm actually surprised she didn't automatically come to our, our court. So if we just invite the boy, then he'll come. So that's what we really want anyway. So yeah, we'll get the boy into to our court. And we had royal favor bestowed upon us. And so we've gotten an increase in prestige. Well, that's quite helpful. Uh, we got our claim. It's going to cost us 63 gold, uh, which is unfortunate because we were going to construct that building. But yeah, we do have to pay for this. So we're going to do that so that we can expand our territory. Uh, though, of course, when we take this territory, uh, we're uh, not going to be able to hold all of them unless we want to sit over our cap. So let's give a, get, get rid of the one that's the least profitable for us. But yeah, we will get this war started here soon. Uh, the claim lasts for a while, though. So uh, We got the boy. Excellent. I'm not entirely sure why we can't change his name, but I don't think it matters because he's near death. He just got the sickly trade, so this character ain't going to make it. Again, that's kind of a shame, because I was hoping we would keep uh, uh, having an heir, just in case, you know what I mean? And so, uh, we were not able to sway him. We don't have a high chance of swaying, 61%. We'll keep it up, though. I'm trying to improve relations if we can here, since he is our future father-in-law. Uh, we did get that Hunter's Lodge, uh, Hunter's Lodge constructed, that our brother started. So again, it's going to be a nice place to, to do the the hunt activities. And unfortunately, our nephew did die. So we'll gain stress from that. So pretty much that's all he did is cause us stress. So our new heir is our youngest brother. He has the same name as our nephew. Eugeus, I guess. Could be another way of spelling Hugh. Because it's kind of similar, just without the H. I'm not entirely sure. Uh, so if you guys know the pronunciation, this would be helpful since it's clearly going to be a name we, we have to, to make use of. Uh, but he's also currently ill. But he's 18, so he should get better. He's a stubborn lad, impatient, and generous. So is he in our court right now? No, he's actually moved over here. Okay, so let's invite him to the court. We want our brother here. And he would be the one that we'd give... Uh, yeah, he needs to be married as well. We'll wait to, to arrange a marriage for him. And looks like there's a war over here. Uh, a liberty war. Okay. It's not going to affect us too much here. Just want to make sure that uh, we're not losing our inheritance here. He still has not had any other children. We are allied to him, so I guess it does affect us in the case that we've got to go assist him in this conflict. I don't know if he'd pull us in or not, but it looks like he is going to. Um, so obviously we're going to go and accept that alliance uh, call. And uh, I don't know if we're actually going to assist much. I mean, we are diligent, so I imagine we would be brave. So yeah, I assume just based on our character traits, we would uh, help him out here. We're going to have to wait to raise our troops up if we do it here. We could raise them back this way, I suppose. Uh, we don't have a huge army. Uh, just no, it's 1,600 now. It's gotten bigger because we've gotten those provinces. But yeah, still not an extremely large army. So let's go and raise up here. So we're away from these troops. And then we'll need to get a commander selected. Right now we have Ansel in charge. He's probably the best choice. And yeah, he's not bad at all. So we'll leave him in charge. His marshal's not as high as you might want it. But let's go ahead and slow it down. But yeah, this is delaying our, our conflict here. Since we've got to help our ally out. And... Yeah, we probably don't want to go there, because I think we'll end up crossing the river to attack him. Though he is a forder, so we wouldn't get the penalty. 
Yeah, because he's a, a forder, just doesn't consider that. Yeah, we shouldn't get the penalty here. So we'll get this army here wiped out. We are a way of assisting in this conflict. And we got some things popping up over here. This is just our brother being able to get married, being able to ask the head of faith for some money. And uh, we never did get endorsed by the bishop. I've been so focused on this marriage and the situation over here. I thought this was the priority, which it was the priority. Um, but yeah, we, we really need to boost that because that's a lot of money we're losing out on as well as levies and stuff. We'll let this go one more time, see if we can succeed. But regardless if we do or not, we're going to go ahead and switch over to try and get our bishop to endorse us because yeah, we need all that money and stuff. All right, so we got a victory here. As usual, y'all know I like looking at the knights. Even more important now with the, the focus on knights in the expansion here. Just seeing how our guys did, though most of these are not our knights. So we didn't look at that. So I guess we'll just focus on taking his armies out. He's got one uh, group of troops over here, which is a bit larger than ours. But I think he'll require our assistance to get those guys defeated. So we can take out this guy first. I'm not entirely sure what he's doing. He's just sitting there. All right, so attacking in the forest is not the best location for this particular general. Uh, passing suspicion. So it is a well-known fact that courtiers will scheme and plot, but I may be able to use this to my advantage. If I can keep my courtiers suspicious of each other and distracted with inviting, they will not have the time or resources to scheme against me. So we can say I will begin spreading rumors at once. Intrigue challenge will make them not like each other, well, all three of these characters, and we'll gain some intrigue lifestyle points. 28% chance we just risk some prestige loss. Or you say as long as I place some spies among them, I'll be safe. Hostile scheme resistance will be increased. Well, I like the chance of getting the intrigue uh, lifestyle points, so let's go with that one. And it worked out, and so therefore we can get a perk. We were pretty close to getting the perk anyways. Yeah, that'll help us towards getting the next one. So let's get the truth is relative. Where we can uh, buy our, you know, pay extra to try and fabricate hooks. So it looks like this guy, hmm, I'm interested. Oh, okay, I see. He's because he's going to get away. That's about, I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, and we just lost 150 prestige because of our crappy chancellor. Yeah, I wasn't sure why I wasn't uh, going to get him engaged. It's because he's going to leave. It's too quick. It's too fast. But yeah, this is not the best train for us to fight him, but, uh, you know, we outnumber him by so much. What we're trying to do is make sure he can't combine with those troops. I'm not entirely sure why he's just sitting there and not fighting this war. Because, yeah, he should be coming over here and doing a siege or something. And we could siege that down. Maybe we'll capture somebody. But we need to stop this siege here. We have more troops than he does now. So I guess the question is, is what does his commanders look like? Because, uh, yeah, our commander here has the 13 advantage. And we would get the, the bonus here, the train bonus. So it's a 14, 15, and 14. So around the same. But then you have the... Uh, if I can just get over there, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it. Yeah, probably not. Yeah, it just, I lock it, but you gotta get over there really quick. So we would have to get him selected and then see like what actual traits he has and stuff. I mean, we might be able to win that. It's hard to say. Hmm. We just need him to come assist. I wonder if I start going over there, if he'll come. Yeah, as you can see, it does say it's a probable loss. And he just won't wake up. I don't know what he's doing over there. Alright, well, I'm not going to lose these battles. Lose my troops for him. If he don't want to fight his own rebellion, then whatever. We'll just do the siege. And we'll help out in that way. Because I don't even really want to help out in this war. It's not my war. But obviously we don't want him... I mean, it's not that big of a deal if he loses this. He's got more allies coming. Maybe that's what he was waiting on for his other allies to appear. So that'll help. Yeah, we'll just do the siege and let them fight this. But they were able to combine their armies here, unfortunately. Uh, so now they're back up to 2,000. But with his 4,000, he should be able to get a victory there. So yeah, we'll do this, uh, this siege while he takes out the army. And that'll be our way of assisting 
in the conflict. I did want to see if there's anybody we can... Oh, we already got somebody. We inherited this uh, position. The Knight of the Serpent. So he's a marauder and a disciplinary. Uh, this is the uh, new accolade system. Uh, so you'll have a, a special knight that gives you nice bonuses as they rank up. So essentially the primary uh, trait here ranks up every odd number, one, three, and five. And then the secondary trait uh, for the, the accolade ranks up on every even number, so two, four, and six. And as he ranks up, he gets you additional uh, bonuses. And so if you look at what, exactly what we're getting here, the Marauder gives you uncontrolled territory attacker advantage plus two. So you fight better if you don't control the territory. And that gets better as you go. So we'll get the monthly prestige per dread. And then a plus five on the uncontrolled territory attacker advantage. Then his secondary trait, disciplinary, is a levy reinforcement rate, and then reduced levy maintenance, and then reduced hostile county attrition. And so the liege modifiers, those we get all the time, so pretty helpful, while the knight army modifiers, that only helps the army that he is currently in. So these are both pretty good. Uh, this guy's got a prowess of 14. He's 44 years old. Already has a successor selected here. We could always change it up and maybe make him our successor if we wanted to. Let me just take a look at who this character is. He's not great. So yeah, maybe we'll change up this knight to be the successor. Yeah, I think it makes sense. So we'll change him up. So in order for them to be a successor, they have to be capable of having the same primary trait. Uh, primary attribute, I should say. Because not every character could be a marauder. It's based off of uh, the traits they have. Uh, so in his case, probably because he's sadistic. In his case, maybe because he's vengeful. I'm not sure how I feel about having a cowardly knight here. Uh, but the secondary tribute does not have to be the same. In which case, if it's not, then you lose some of their uh, glory here. And so they get their glory from participating in tournaments and you know winning in the tournaments, for being in uh, winning battles. And you can only have so many of these. As of right now, we only have access to one. I don't know if we want to keep that. You can always retire it and start a new one. I suppose it's fine for right now. But if we had like a really great knight, I might want to get rid of that one. I mean, it doesn't have any glory right now, so now would be the time to get rid of it. There's nothing wrong with the Marauder one, but... Yeah, we'll work on the siege here while he goes and takes out the enemy army. Maybe he'll capture somebody and end the war. Because we have such a small army, we didn't need to like split up our troops or anything. And here's the council invitation. This one's for the marshal position. Again, why not give me the spy master? I think it's because this duke here is spy master and he's better than us. It's probably the case. So yeah, we'll go ahead and accept whatever position they want to give us. I mean, you still get the, the bonuses for being on it. So in this case, we're getting prowess, which is always helpful. Army gold maintenance, that's nice to have. Uh, obviously the monthly martial lifestyle doesn't really help us the experience for that, but levy size, that's nice. So yeah, some good bonuses, way better than the, the chancellor bonuses, which we were initially offered. Uh, so we got an activity invitation to a, go to a hunt. Uh, we may be at war, but we're not leading our troops, so we could go to this. All that really matters is where is it lo located? Uh, because yeah, we don't want to travel really far again. So that one's just too far. We are going to, uh, uh, decline this yeah that's just too far we did it last time so I could show the mechanic because I didn't know how often we'd get them and as you can see we're only getting them every couple years here so I did want to show the mechanic in the first episode but normally I would not accept something so far away particularly in the winter because you guys saw how well that worked out for us uh, we finished the siege got ourselves uh, a prisoner as well uh, looks like Count Guy would not Except the ransom, unfortunately. So just hold on to her for now. That's the Countess. Isn't that his wife? <laughs> so clearly no love there in that relationship. Uh, so we did finish this up. Let's go ahead. All right, so they, they were defeated and they're now uh, retreating. Try and engage that army. It looks like they're gonna engage us. All right, let's fight in the forest. Kill these 200 dudes. I'm not entirely sure why they attacked us. We'll take the victory though. 
Uh, we captured another combatant as well, so have somebody else to ransom. And let's just take a look, see how our knights did. Uh, I like seeing how they did so you know who to reward when it's time to give out titles and such. Just see who's serving you well. And it's just fun to see who they killed and maimed in battle. Alright, so Ansel. Clearly quite impressive. That's that disloyal knight that we got last episode. And you know, it's it's turning out that the journey that we took, you know, there were some there were enough benefits now where I would say it was worth it. I mean, obviously we got the marriage out of that, so that was pretty important. Since uh he told us our secret that we used to hey, his secret that we used to, to blackmail him. I think we're gonna go ahead and do another siege. Maybe over here next. Could try and chase these guys down as well. It looks like he's doing all the yeah, he's gonna chase them down. I don't really like having to chase down enemy armies, so we'll just do the siege here. But yeah, in between uh you know getting getting that hook and then the fact that we got that one knight who may dis be disloyal, but he's still a decent knight. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Uh, we almost have this finished up. And then we'll have to expand our troops so we can do this war. See if there's anything here. Nope. Just the fact that we don't have a court position. Probably should get one. We do have that money. It makes sense to get one hired. Uh, so let's go ahead and do so. I almost want to replace her as Caravan Master. Good God, she was horrible. But she still has the highest aptitude. Uh, court position. No good options, so it looks like we're going to have to send off for one. So let's go ahead and do so. Search for a physician. See if we can't find a good candidate. Now our betrothed is currently 11 years old. Still a few more years before we'll be able to get married. So you can see that Nicholas is supposed to be the good one, since it's requiring the most money. But they both have a terrible aptitude. Wow. Yeah, I'm not going to hire either one of these. They're they're both horrible. They don't have the physician traits. His learning's just average. Yeah, I'm not paying them all that money. So yeah, they both fell to impress. So that's unfortunate. We'll have to shop around a bit more. We'll be able to fire the decision off again. I don't remember the, the cooldown. Uh, we'll take a look and see when we can fire this again. 1071. So we'll look for another physician. All right, so these sieges are getting us some money. We're not really paying for the army. Having it raised up, of course, but uh, all these ransoms might. So let's just see who all we can we can ransom, and just who these characters are. Yeah, like he's an an heir. Okay, so yeah, I think we'll we'll ransom off any characters we can. We need the money. Could also get the hooks. I don't know that we'll need a hook on him. He is his vassal. So you can maybe use him if you're wanting to plot against him, but I don't know why we'd be plotting against our brother-in-law, or excuse, against our father-in-law. Uh, we need money. That's what we really need. So we're going to go ahead and try and get as much money as we can. So that's the same character. He, he might not even have the money to pay for her after the first ransom. We'll see. Not quite. And I want that two extra gold, so we're going to wait. Or we could just do it for the hook, to have the hook on him. Since 10 gold is really nothing. You never know. Maybe it'll be useful in the future. So let's just get the hook on him. And we got a victory in that conflict. All right, excellent. All right, so we'll disband all of our troops. Our brother was imprisoned since he was one of the, the rebels. And again, we failed to sway him. Yeah, he just got to quit, guys. Uh, we need to sway the bishop. And we have such a low chance of success. Our problem is our really low diplomacy, guys. Uh, our diplomacy skill is absolutely garbage. And so we got a 31% chance of success. That's just horrible. Now, part of this problem is also that this guy's paranoid. We're just as likely to decrease his opinion at this point. All right, well, I feel like we still got to do it. We could just give him a gift. I don't really want to give him the money. We finally got some money. And I'd like to get some stuff constructed instead so let's go in and build something in Toulouse here. We already know we want to get those, uh, get the barracks. So let's go and start on that. Make our heavy infantry better. So we might wait to do this war until after we get the barracks. Because uh, we don't need to, but we did just do a war. 
So let's let it play. Get the barracks constructed, and then we'll declare war for our claim there. And I never did pass the crown authority. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. Pass the limited crown authority. I was going to impact the opinions. You'll notice that there are multiple types of vassal opinion. If you haven't been following the dev diary, that's one of the things they changed. Uh, so much along the lines of the, the men in arms change, where they're trying to avoid you being able to stack all the modifiers to make the men in arms super good. Uh, you get to the point in uh, the game where you get so many vassal opinion modifier uh, bonuses that it, it's no longer a problem. Uh, all your vassals like you because you stacked all these opinion bonuses. And so now they split them up into multiple types of vassals who like and dislike different things. And so if we just looked at like the uh, the glory hound here, those are the things they like. Uh, if the, the liege has a partition succession law, if the, he achieves victory in offensive wars or invites in the hunt activities, uh, dislikes if they have high crown authority or signs defeat or white peace in wars. So what you'd expect from a, a glory hound. So you have the, uh, you have the uh, multiple different types of, of vassals. And so yeah, I really like that change too. Pretty good. Uh, but let's go ahead and pass the limited crown authority. I meant to do that in the first episode and just forgot. It's not going to have any huge changes on us right now. Just allows us to revoke titles and stuff. But yeah, we want to get that cooldown started. Uh, so we'll end up hey ransom count Guy. So I think this is yeah, this is his son. So the son will pay for the mother, but he would not pay for his wife. Uh, but the son wants the mother. So yeah, we're going to accept that. And so we end a rival. She's not happy about uh, her time in our prison. Oh, okay. Uh, so we've got two more people in our prison currently. So we can ransom her off. Seems she's not all that important. So yeah, you can just get a hook. It's not really anything else to be done unless you want to like recruit her or something. So yeah, we'll just do it for the hook. Get her out of the dungeon. And then we have this character here, Anfos, who might be a good choice for like a, a spy master. He'd also be a powerful agent against you though. So something to consider if you, you bring him in your court. I mean, he's, he's only level 14, so we'll probably just get the weak hook on him. And wherever he goes, maybe he could serve as an agent for us in one of our future schemes. So just get them out the dungeon. Empty it out. And we now have a powerful vassal who expects a seat on the council. I assume it's this character, finally of age. Yeah. And unfortunately... He's just not very good. Okay. So he could replace Ansel. Obviously that irritated him. He doesn't like us anyways. So he could replace him. We're going to have a much worse uh, a Marshall here. Hmm. Yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and put him in place. He does have the higher diplomacy skill than the Chancellor, but yeah, he's not great either. Uh, but at this point, we, we don't want to piss anybody off. So let's try and appease all of our powerful vassals so we can focus on our more important matters, like expanding our territory. And a faction was created against us. This guy created a faction against us. I just said I'm trying to appease you guys. And they create a faction against us. Uh, we're now the new cultural head because Gilham the Eighth is, is dead. So that means his daughter is already succeeded, and he did have more children. We weren't paying attention to that. Uh, he had two more daughters. But basically, she is now the Duchess of Aquitaine. Now, she did lose all this territory here in the north to her sister, who now controls that. But yeah, our wife is now the most powerful Duchess of in France. Okay. Uh, again, we still have to wait till she uh, gets of age to, to have the marriage. Yeah, that worked out well for us. So far, anyways. So there is a, a hunt activity in our lands, so we'd want to participate in that, though we can't arrive in time. Damn, I must have just missed it. That's unfortunate. Uh, Pope Alexander also 
has a grand tournament we'd love to participate in, but we might not arrive in time. And that would be one hell of a journey. Yeah, this is may not arrive either. Hmm. So just looking at the events, so they have the archery, the wrestling, you got the, uh, then you got the ceremony and the conclusion. Yeah, I don't think we'll arrive to that one in time. It's five months, all things, all different kinds of things can hold us up. It's a long journey as well. Yeah, that'd take forever to get over there. Uh, so we'll just do this, this hunt, or we're trying to. We'll see if we can get there in time. It says that right now the activity starts on the 6th. We'd have to arrive by the 9th. So essentially the reason why they're even giving us the option to, to try and join it is that we could spend money to try and rush over there. Again, it's not that far. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how you'd even... I guess if you hired mercenary guards. Yeah, that's still it's not enough. You'd have to do like a bunch of different things. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how they... I think we could get there in time. Yeah, there's no way. Okay, so yeah, we can't join. That hunt, despite the fact that it's up close, I just missed it. That's part of the problem of being at speed 5 here. And our counselor ate some poisonous plants by mistake and died. Okay. So that was the marshal. Is that the one that... That's not this... Yeah, that was the one who just took over. He barely lived. He became a man and then he died. Uh, so now our brother is the next uh, powerful vassal. Okay. Well, I do want to put him in position. But uh, he wouldn't be good at this one. He'd be better at the Chancellor one. This guy's just horrible at everything. But I'm trying to keep him appeased for now. Uh, but we can move the steward over. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Um, so let's go ahead and have... Uh, so we'll have him put in place here. And then we're going to have these two uh, flip. So we lose a little bit of that stewardship. But yeah, we got an okay marshal now. Let me make sure everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing as well. Still collecting taxes. We'll work on development later. Still working on the domestic affairs. Currently disrupting schemes. Yeah, that works out fine. And yeah, we're doing the organized army. So everything is good to go. So we're just waiting to get this here constructed, which will be done in 20 months. And we don't really need the bonus. We could just declare war, I suppose. So let's go for the Swift Execution Murder Scheme Progress plus 30%. I'm sure there'll be more people we'll need to murder with our intrigue focused character here. So we had the Cathar Heresy emerge, which is really interesting for Toulouse. This is actually what brought down our dynasty because it, it emerges historically. Uh, or it becomes very prominent here in southern France in this area pretty much throughout all this duchy here well yeah I brought down the Counts of Toulouse uh, it was a huge problem uh, them they really didn't want to you know deal with the the heresy which was, they weren't themselves Cathar uh, but yeah they didn't really do much about it and pissed the Pope off and and also the, this uh, region of France the, the, the counts and the, the you know, they were a duke for a period uh, were very independent minded they didn't really like the kings of France or the Pope or anybody else get involved in their their business uh, but yeah, it's just interesting that we have this happening here Catharism uh, we could convert to it but we won't we're a zealous character it doesn't make sense for us uh, but yeah it's uh, again the, the, also this dynasty did not did not convert to Catharism and again we're being brought into one of her or one of their conflicts this time it's the tyranny and obviously we got to keep our betrothed on the throne so we'll go and accept the call to arms but yeah not able to get our own conflicts going and it's just kind of one of the negatives about having allies period uh you see we are actually outnumbered in this conflict Ooh, so this is one our, our wife absolutely needs assistance and now the results of the demands being enforced is that she's deposed. And so this is a big deal for us. Uh, we would lose everything we've been working at right now if we uh, don't win this. Um, so I don't know if we even have the means to win it. 
yeah, I don't know, guys. Uh, let's go move our rally point over to here, get a little bit closer. Uh, and I'm not too worried about them being able to move over here in, in the four days, I think, that it would take. About four days for us to go ahead and raise up our army. Yeah, it'd be four days. So let's go ahead and turn this down. Go ahead and attack that army here. Uh, make sure we've got... Yeah, we got our forder in charge here. Although this is actually a different character. Hmm. He has one plus marshal, but... The open terrain expert, I think, is, is more useful in this case. Uh, so I think we're actually going to switch this up and put this guy in charge instead, despite him having the lower marshal. Anytime we fight in the plains, it would be worth it. Uh, but yeah, we can wipe out those 298, but yeah, we've got to stop all these guys from being able to assemble. Because if they assemble all their troops together, then they outnumber us. So pretty, pretty significant issue there. We got another combatant captured. Gonna take a look at the battle real quick. See how our knights did. All right, so took out one of their knights there. Uh, looks like our knight was wounded here. And this is that one useless count. He's not even good as a knight, so I would not be sad to see him die. All right. So because we have the acclaimed knight in here, we should have the acclaimed knight in here. Yeah, I don't think he is in there. Let me just take a look what's going on in that front. Why is he not in here? In this army. Hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Because it seems almost like... Yeah, he's a wanderer. How could he be in this position, in our knight position, if he's not even in our court? Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what's going on there. Yeah, I didn't notice that before. Hmm. I think we might just get rid of this. You always get some weird situations when you inherit these positions. The accolades. We're going to get rid of this, guys. We just need to create our own accolade. I think that's the better way of going. So we have uh, two options. So our best is this mare here. Or we have uh, Ansel. So let's just take a look and see what they have available to us. So he could do the, the Huntsmaster as the primary trait, or the Charmer. So the, the Huntsmaster, so it makes uh, us better at as, as a hunter, so that's useful. And us and our primary heir may gain the Hunter trait every few years. So basically it just makes us a better hunter, it looks like. It reduces the Hunter peril, so he affects the, the hunt. Uh, the, the Charmer one would make our courtiers Slightly more vulnerable to the seduce schemes. And just makes us better at seducing. So yeah, this is a seduction focused one. Uh, so I don't know if that's either of those are the ones we want. Uh, Ansel only has one choice, which is the Outrider one. And so that increases the max size of Light Cavalry. Of course, we're not even anywhere near our max size yet. We still got to build our men and arms up. Uh, but it does give us some nice bonuses for the army that he's in. And he is currently fighting our army. Uh, increases our movement speed, and then our light cav will be improved. And that's what we get at the, the full rank 6 there. So then you have the secondary, uh, you know, which in his case would be the scoundrel. Which this one's just not that useful unless you're going to hire mercenaries. You do get the marshal per stress level, but I never sit at stress levels. We do need to take a look at what's in our inventory. Maybe something we inherited from our brother. Could just be that one uh, sword that we can't use. Uh, so yeah, out of these these two, the Huntsmaster seems to be the better option. I mean, neither one is like super impressive here. I mean, the light cav bonuses I suppose is helpful since we do have light cav, and it does increase the speed of our army. I don't know. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Which one do you think is better? Uh, honestly, I don't think either of those are are that impressive. We might want to wait till we get a better knight before we create a position there. And neither one of them have very good uh, prowess either. So another thing to consider. So looking at where the armies are, they have just uh, 700 something up there. So could get those engaged, but it's probably better to try and wipe out this stronger army here. We have to go all the way around though. Unless you cross here. I suppose that's an option. Hmm. It says this is the fastest route, but he'll just escape, I think. So, 
Let's go this way. Yeah, he's going that way anyways. So yeah, we'll go to see if we can't cross this ford here. We would lose that battle there. And that's a total, yeah, <laughs> 2,300 dudes. Maybe if they're crossing, it really depends on if they're able to cross or not without the, the penalty. Looks like they have some really good leaders here. Unlike the last conflict. Yeah, there's some much better, much better commanders now. All right, what well, is in the plane? So we get the the bonus there, and her army is only it's, it's right there. Well, we didn't get there in time, so it's relevant. Hmm. Yeah, her army is right there. So we'll go across here. Yeah, she might assist if we were in battle. So now he's taken off to the south. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure how we want to go about doing this. If we go after him, we're going to lose. These are all four, so we don't get the bonus. So they're better generals and they have more troops. So going after him would not be wise. Can't just sit here, though. Because we're currently losing supplies. Could just go after that 710 to get them wiped out while she continues the siege. Yeah, I think that's going to be what we'll have to do here. I'm just worried about them coming across and defeating her troops while we're up here in the north. We could also start a siege up so we could be doing sieges next to each other. And then we can support her. There's this territory down here if you just wanted to take that. It's not that far away. So we could take control of that instead. But I feel like we got to wipe this army out. We'll see what they do. Let's start moving up this way. I assume they'll come over here and attack her. But he's coming down. Where can we cross here? Oh yeah, you can just cross this river. Yeah, it might not be a river, I can't tell. Looks like it's not a river. Okay, so yeah, we'll just cross right there. Yeah, I thought there was a river there, but there's not. So we'll just cross there. Uh, looks like the, the that army's now fleeing. Uh, we got additional taxes, so that'll be helpful. Uh, we are at war, but we're not spending a lot, so there's no reason why we can't go ahead and spend that money. Uh, we also have people we could ransom Though, we'll have to see if we actually want to to ransom them off or not. Like, if they're going to be a decent knight or a decent commander, then you wouldn't want to. Yeah, I don't see any reason not to ransom this guy off for 50. Let's take a look at this guy here. He's an okay knight, so we'll probably keep him locked up. Yeah, we'll keep him locked up for now until uh, after the conflict's over, I suppose. Or until, like, we're in a better, more secure position. So she's leaving that siege that she's worked so hard on. I'm not entirely sure why she's leaving that siege. Uh, so with that money, we can go ahead and get something constructed. Uh, I kind of want to go ahead and do the men-at-arms, build up the men-at-arms a bit more. Like get this armored footman increased. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. We, we need more troops, essentially, guys. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and pump the money into the, into the men-at-arms. All right, so we'll try and get this army wiped out. Well, it looks like we're chasing them down now. We might be able to get there first, and they're locked. No. So yeah, we're just kind of chasing them down now. And she's tagging along with us. Causing us to eat more supplies up. <laughs> Which is great. Alright, so it looks like this is where the battle's going to be. In this hill province. We'll outnumber them. And uh, we'll get her assistance. And I don't think their army will arrive here in time to assist in the battle. So they're going to work on a siege instead. Looks like our brother was successful at killing one of their knights. All right, excellent. So we got a nice victory there. Let's go ahead and take a look what happened. Also captured some of the enemy enemy knights. And let's see how our knights did. So we killed this guy while he was treating. We already saw that our brother killed this knight. Uh, our knight was wounded here. Yeah, this guy was wounded as well. Okay. We captured two additional knights. We can take a look, see if they're any good. Looks like they're both garbage, though. He's a good commander, so we don't want to give him back. But Duran, we could give him back for some money. We'll see if we can even get anything. So let's just take a peek. No, can't get anything. Okay, so we'll just keep him in the prison for now. No reason to 
I'll let him go then. That's just a notification about the uh, the ransom. All right, so it's 2,300. With our armies combined, we can defeat them. But we gotta get her to like go with us. We did not swim again, but not surprising. 31% chance of success is not high. Yeah, I just can't get her to do what I want, which is to go do this battle. Because, yeah, we are not going to win that by ourselves. Yeah, that's a bummer. And so we don't want to siege there. We should probably come down here and siege then. And we'll all just be working on sieges, and we'll be all far away from each other, which just ensures that we're going to lose this conflict. Could chase those guys down to wipe them out. But they're so close, they'd probably come and assist in that battle. I mean, I could see. Nah, we're, we're putting ourselves at risk here. That would be wise. Yeah, because they would just come and assist. We'll be able to destroy this army, though. So there's that. Destroy those hundred-something dudes. So yeah, we'll do this, and then we'll... Then we capture somebody else. All right, excellent. So I suppose we could try ransoming... That character, we're starting to get a lot of a lot of dudes up in here. Uh, so that would be this guy up here. So that's he has 34 of the 50 gold. We'll just wait till he gets the whole 50. All right, so we got this victory here. Obviously, we don't need to look at all that. That was a real small battle. So yeah, we'll just work on the siege. It's unfortunate we're having to do all these fights just to keep her on the throne. Kind of reminds me a lot of some of our past series. Uh, I, I recall two different series where we had that problem where we were just constantly fighting wars to keep like daughters or uh, or spouses on the throne so that we can inherit. So we got an event here, Chase by Shadows. Uh, foot, footsteps echoing down the dark hallways, misplaced papers in my study, a shadow seen from the corner of my eye. You think someone is following you? My brother, Ugeus, seems to mull it over before nodding to himself. I have noticed some suspicious things in the castle recently. So this bug is still present. <laughs> the uh, outfit bug that happens. So we can say, I, I need to get to the bottom of this, and we might get an Intrigue Lifestyle perk. Or we can say, I'll make sure that I'll never have to worry about safety again, and we'll become more, more vigilant for five years, get an increased Intrigue and Hostile Scheme Resistance. Yeah, let's go for this one. We'll see if we can't get uh, the perk. So we do have a, a Dangerous Faction might potentially rise up. So part of the problem, of course, is that this guy here is now of age, and thus he wants a position on our council. So who is on here that's not supposed to be? Our brother. Okay, so he got removed. Hmm. Obviously, we don't want to piss our brother off, but uh, we need to appease that guy. Our brother's not that powerful himself. We can't have two uh, powerful vassals irritated. So let's go ahead and, and uh, switch him out for Ricard. And then switch out Ricard and our former steward. So we actually have a better marshal and steward because of that. Though, of course, did irritate our brother in the process. Yeah, I just don't know that we'll be able to increase opinion with him without just throwing gold at him. And it might be worth it in the long run because you're gonna get all that uh, all that money that you weren't getting. We could try. We do have that artifact to gift him, but it's only gonna give you one opinion, <laughs> so that's not worth it. Uh, so I'm guessing we don't have the the gold. Yeah, you need 150. Wow. All right. So it'd take forever for that to be uh, worth it. I did forget to take a look at what we got in the. Okay, it was the core artifact. All right, didn't know if there's anything else we might have inherited. We didn't get a message about it, so I didn't think so. So it should be done with that siege soon. We still got ways to go. But yeah, they have the entire army together now. So hidden in one of the more desolate hallways, one that one that leads to most private chambers as well as the castle gardens. I wait and I watch. Was it foolish to come here? Maybe if I footsteps. Moving quietly down the hallway, a figure emerging from the shadows. What is Orson doing? So this is Orson the, Cra the Craven. 
I think he was in one of the travel events. So we say, I will confront him immediately. If he's involved in a scheme, you will expose it. If not, your attempt at rooting out the spy fails. I must be sure I will continue to follow him. Intrigue challenge. 71% chance he does not notice us. Or I will not expose myself. It cannot be him. Well, I wouldn't say our traits would determine any of these. So yeah, we'll go with the, I must be sure. We are an intrigue focused guy. So it makes the most sense for us to, to go with the better option. So I'll see if we can't reveal this plot here. So you can reinstate those nightly positions. I managed to follow Orson without a sound. He hurry, hurries down one hallway after another, and after a couple of minutes, he steps right past my chambers and out into the castle gardens. Well, it is a lovely night tonight, so we laid our suspicions to rest, and this was a valuable lesson. So we get that intrigue lifestyle perk. Excellent. So it ended up being worth it. So we'll do the job done right next. Hostile scheme success chance increase by plus 25%. So if we need to do any assassinations in the future, this should be much easier to complete. So she won that siege. We're at 40% currently. She's going over here to do this next siege. And I guess that's what we'll do. We'll just work on sieges. But let's hope she doesn't get captured. Well, well that's interesting. They didn't go after... I see, I was thinking because when you hover out this way, it looks kind of like it is the capital. But they didn't go after the capital location. They're going after this one here. Interesting. Interesting choice there. Because if they go after the capital, there's a good chance they're going to capture her. Because uh, she's not out leading her troops. Yeah, they capture her, the war's over. And everything we work for will be for nothing. Uh, just seeing how she's developed so far. She's stubborn, greedy, and chaste. So just fantastic traits. Uh, so the chaste trait is obviously going to decrease the fertility. causes some problems there. As you know, we are sitting at... Uh, how old are we? 26 years old, still no heir. Currently our brother's a, the heir. So we might want to get him married. Maybe he, he can have some children before he gets too old. We're not going to look for a spouse right now, though. So, unfortunately, we do have to end the episode here. We won't be able to finish up the conflict. It's going to be a little while to, to get this war done. So far we're winning, which is good, considering the fact that you know we are outnumbered. Although now the numbers are a little bit closer after those victories that we got. Yeah, so now we have a few more troops than they do. So those victories are pretty important. So we're winning currently, so hopefully that will remain the case next episode. So I do hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you have a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. do hope to see you on the next one, and thanks for watching.